Right, this is just a quick video and a few tips for stamping clay for patterns like the peacock eye um, and pebble. And actually, I'll just show you what I mean in case you haven't seen it. So this is a peacock eye useful bowl. Um, So it's a pattern stamped from the outside in that the glaze then flows over. Um, and it's done with a rotary grinding bit, which leaves, you can see the shape of the pattern on the outside, which is quite nice when it shows through, it just gives a bit more interest, but also has the advantage of it um, kind of catches the clay a bit better than a round tool will just spin on the spot and I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. So, first thing to say is that these were thrown yesterday. No, they were actually thrown two days ago. So I throw them, I leave them for a time period before wiring them off. Um, and because it's winter or heading into winter here, they're taking a bit longer. So in the summer, I would throw them, leave them overnight covered wire them off and stamp them that day because they'll dry a bit faster. Um, what I've actually done here is thrown them um, two days ago, wired them off, so trimmed the outside and wired them off. I've got a video on that. I'll try and remember to link in the comments. Um, then put them upside down to dry overnight. And the reason you put them upside down is because you want the outside drier than the inside, ideally. So if you dry them upside down, it kind of traps the moisture inside a bit more. You definitely don't want it the other way around. And the reason is that um, you don't want the bit to stick. If the clay is too wet, it'll, as you stamp in, it'll start to stick into the clay and pull when it comes back out. So if there's resistance when you pull the bit away, you know the clay is too wet on the outside. And if the clay on the inside starts to crack, then you know the inside is too dry. And you can balance the two of them the way you want them by firstly drying upside down. And secondly, what I do is, um, well, I'll stamp one to make sure. So the other thing to say is that I've drawn lines in as I was trimming them off the bat. Those are drawn in in Sharpie, they'll burn off in the bisque kiln. And then stamping, especially with uh, the grinding bit, what you want to do is roll around. You don't want to just push in because the clay ideally is going to be soft enough that if you did that, you'd start to collapse the clay in. So what you want to do is push with less pressure on a smaller surface area. So I'll show you what I mean. And that is you put it centrally on the bit, you know, support the top. And I've got it on a, um, just an old t-shirt. Uh, that's twofold, it protects the rim, but also because it's difficult for the piece to slide over, if you then apply downward pressure, the rim can't deform which it could do on a slippery surface as you push in, this side will want to slide in, finds it much harder on a t-shirt or similar soft surface. So push down from the top, line the center of your bit up with your line and then roll your hand around. So light pressure and because each time as you roll, it's only applying to the, the specific point that you're on, you'll find you can bend more clay in that way without deforming the outside. So that's how I stamp. What you want to do at this point is check the inside. That actually looks okay. But um, I'll see if any of these are a bit dry so I can demonstrate it. Actually, they all feel pretty good, to be honest. If anything's that one, that one will be too dry. So you can feel, assuming you're used to working with clay you, you kind of know how dry it is from how tacky it is and just how it feels so that is too dry on the inside if I stamp with the pebble and notice no lines that's because this is a pebble piece and actually it would be better higher up because the rim is always a bit dry you will probably be able to see no they're all right they'll start to crack um, and the, the other thing to say is that they'll crack along lines of weakness. So if you rib the inside uh, smoother, you're less likely to get cracked lines across. If you leave throwing lines in, those are the points where it will crack. But if it's too dry, it will crack regardless. And those cracks will be visible through the glaze because the glaze won't fill them in completely. So if the inside's too dry and you stamp, 
see if I, if I do a deeper one, maybe I can get it to crack. And you can repair these by um, wetting the clay after. No, it's that's all right. So I could get away with stamping this one, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I'll show you quickly what I would do because it is on the drier side. Um, I've got an IKEA, just one of their garden spray bottles. Uh, you could probably, because I, I use this for a few different things, so I've kind of kept this one. But you'd be better off with a slightly finer misting bottle, which is ordinary water. And then what I do is I just mist the inside. And then you want to make sure that it doesn't pull at the bottom. So roll it around to make sure that all the water travels this way and is kind of spread about evenly until it starts to get absorbed, which it's doing there. So there's no drips. Then you can set it down for a minute so that the rim firms back up. What's happened is the water has absorbed into primarily the first kind of half millimetre of the clay on the inside and that clay is now slightly wetter than all the rest of the clay. If you left this for long enough it would even out but for now that clay is wetter so give it kind of a minute or two. I, what I do is I, if I've got a bunch of pieces I'll go round misting them, setting them back. Obviously don't set them on the rim while the rim's wet. Um, just leave them like that for a minute or two and then assuming that's borderline firm enough didn't have much water then you can turn it back over and continue to stamp and the outside remains as dry as it was so you get a good release there's no sticking when it comes away but the inside is stamped really nicely so you can balance the two levels of dryness like that um, and it doesn't matter for the pebble so much but I'll just do one line of the peacock eye to show you one other important thing, which is how you get it to line back up. Now you could be really scientific with this. Um, Hartley and Noble do what I believe they call a spider bat, but it's like a spider's web, but just lines marked out. And you could use those plus the laser if you wanted to do it in incremental sections. So like maybe turn it by 10 degrees and stamp again. I don't bother. Um, because the problem with doing it in degrees like that is that a bigger piece, 10 degrees, is more distance. So the same arc length is a, a greater section of the circle, which means you end up with a bigger gap. So really you want to match the, the, the gap between the dots to the size of the piece. So it's much easier to just space them out and you don't want to put them too close together really because um, once they start to kind of overlap the, the full effect of the pattern is gone. Um, you can see it runs down between so it, one will flow down in the gap between the others and then separate out. If um, they were all right up against each other there wouldn't be the channel so clearly left between them, and you wouldn't get um, you wouldn't get that flow. I mean, it, it still works, but, but it's worth leaving a gap. So I aim to have a couple of mil between the edge of each stamp. Um, but then what you want to do is you can just keep going round like this, making sure you apply even pressure on the top, um, and on the you want the pressure to be around the, the outside. Don't push in the middle because you'll start to bend it, which isn't ideal. But you want to be aware of where the, the first the starting dot is. So this is a good distance to leave. And what you want to do is rather than keep going until they meet and hope that they meet properly, once you're a distance apart, and I generally go for three dots apart, you halve it and then halve those. What you can see there is that those might be a fraction closer together than the other dots, but not noticeably. What you don't want is one dot that's clearly wrong, one gap that's either bigger or smaller. By spreading it out over essentially five dots, because you've got your two outer ones, 
and then the ones between. Um, you could basically be, you know, if you're half a thing too big, that's spread out over each of them, it only works out to about a millimetre. Whereas it would be very noticeable if the pattern either had a huge gap or hit itself. And then all I do is I just go halfway between the two and start again. Do that three times for a mug, um, five times if it's a big bowl because you've got the space to do more. You could keep going down the mug if you wanted. I find three on something this size gives you a really nice differentiation between the two. Um, flows down and um, yeah I think that's all there is to it really you want to be doing this at a, the right level of dryness and that's just something that you'll get the hang of the more you do it but obviously if you've got sealed plastic boxes and you've got a, a misting bottle you can get away with quite a lot in terms of letting them get too dry or leaving them for a long period of time so uh, just get your drying schedule sorted and then you can experiment with uh, how dry you want each one of them to be when you stamp it. Um, yeah, I'll put some pictures of some fired pieces on, but uh, that's it.